Oh, yeah. You know what time it is. Time for everybody's favorite post-podcast podcast. It's Dinkin' Around with Eddie and Webby. That's right, folks. Dinkin' Around, where it's like the Eddie and Webby podcast, just a little bit less structured, a little bit more raw, maybe a little bit more PG-13, if you know what I'm saying, huh? Oh, yeah. I mean, this show, it's a bit crazy. It's a bit edgy. You never know what's going to happen. We have no idea what's going to happen because we didn't plan any of it out, really. So anything could happen. (laughs) That is right. But we actually have a ton of amazing topics to talk about. There's been so many stuff, so many stuff. There's been so many stuff. Uh, (laughs) There's been a lot of things going on with Webby and I, both individually as well as together when it comes to pickleball. And so maybe we can talk about that. We might have a guest that might be joining us that I'm going to check on here. So, um, oh, nice. What do you want to, you want to kick it off here for us, Webby? Yeah, I'll kick it off. I'll kick it real good. And, uh, actually, I'm going to start off by, uh, cracking open a beverage. And this is something that, uh, that, Eddie has been drinking a lot of. I've been jealous lately because I haven't been drinking it, and I'm gonna have a spiked seltzer for once, Ooh, like a real one, not not a not a Zima like I drank on episode fifty one. I am drinking a truly Zima, um, and this is wild berry flavor. Living on the edge, I'm gonna get wild tonight with the wild berry truly. Very nice. And I forget, is Truly the one that you liked, or is it the one that you said tasted a bit artificial? Uh, so Truly was not the worst one I've had, but I don't like it as much as Henry's because it does taste a little bit fake, not as natural as Henry's. It does have added sugar, which, you know, I don't, I don't like. I'd prefer not to have that. So, But I like it. It's not bad. If it's there, I'd rather have it. But, you know, what are you going to do? Yeah. Is somebody down there with you right now? (laughs) (laughs) Yes, there's somebody down here. And then also, (laughs) you can't really see him that good. Jack the Cat is right here, and he's sitting very weird. Hey, Jack, bring your head over here so the people can see you a little bit. Come on. Come here. Chip, chip. Chip, chip. Can you see him? Nah, his. But you see that weird, like, blob of fur with a a cat arm on top of it? That's that's Jack the Cat. There he is. Where's my chippy? Oh, and there's Skip. Skip the intern. Skip Skip the intern is back. Hey, Skippy. Skip and Chippy. Skip, I told you not to show up on camera. It isn't the time. I didn't call for you. Come on, Skip. (laughs) Stop it. Always getting in the shot, that Skip. Yeah, that's right, Skip. You you run upstairs. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, man. Um, So we might have a guest coming on here very soon. See what happens. We, We put it out there in the podcast, and then all of a sudden, people are just like, we want to be on the show. We want to be on the show. We bring him on the show, right? That's what yeah, everybody doing. always thinks we're kidding when we say that we'll have a, a guest live here on the spot, and we're going to prove to you that we are not lying. Um, we really, if you want to be on the show, you'll all you got to do is contact us, and we'll let you on the show. That's, oh, that's all there is to it. Well, um, what should we talk about first? I think, uh, I think, so. I read the the Facebook pickleball forum all the time. Aspen's pickleball forum. There's always great stuff on there. Some stuff too that you're just like, oh my god, why do these people, why do these people <laughs> write this stuff? But there's yes. a topic that you, it sounded like you wanted to talk about that was recently on the pickleball forum, right, Webby? Yes. Uh, people are constantly posting stuff about rules that they disagree with, or maybe they have questions about. And one that got brought up recently is, <coughs> <coughs> whoa, getting choked up here about it. But somebody brought up thoughts on the rule that says, if you hit the net on your serve, which then hits the opponent, uh, you still get a point. Why do you get a point? Why isn't it a let if it hits the net before that happens? And that's a great question. That's actually a rule that I never totally understood. Like to me, if it hits the net first, like why, why should the server get a point 
even if it hits the opponent, if it hits the net first. I mean, do you agree with that rule or are you good with that rule? Well, I mean, I, I think we need to break down a lot of the rules about if the ball hits the opponent on a serve. Because there was actually a whole conversation about it again today about the Nasty Nelson. And to me, it comes down to if you can't prove where the ball is going to land and you're obstructing the play, then it has to be your fault. There's really no other way around it. So I understand from a Nasty Nelson perspective why we have that rule, and anybody that disagrees with it I think is just I, – I, I, don't, I don't think they understand it. But this one definitely does bring up the gray area. Now, as you all know, if you serve and you hit the net and it doesn't land in the receiver's box, then – it's a fault, then it goes to the next server, right? But if it lands in the box, then it's a redo one time. And so mm -hmm. if, if it hits you, you have no way to prove whether it should be a reserve or a fault and moves on to the next server. But the difference here is, why not at least worst case scenario, just say, well, worst case, it's, at, it's going to just, you know, it, it, it's, it's going to be just a change of server, right? Does that make sense? Yeah, it makes sense. Um, so uh, Kyle Yates actually chimed in on this. He is uh, he's actually very uh, uh, <clears throat> I can't think of the word I'm trying to think of right now, but he he definitely is on the side of it should be a let. And I agree with what he yeah. said because he said if you if you hit a serve into a person, technically it's kind of considered in because you get the point. I mean, it's not considered in, but it's like it's like what you said. If it hits the opponent. You have no way of knowing whether it was going to be in or out. Um, but I kind of side with Kyle where like the it's almost like the person is an extension of the court. Right. Yeah. So if you hit the person, technically it's in, you get the point. However, if you hit the uh, if you hit the net and it lands in anywhere on the court, it's a let. So why wouldn't it be a let if you hit the person after it hits the net? Because you kind of treat the person as an extension of the court. I mean, I know that's not really that's that specifically isn't in the rule book that like a human is an extension of the court, right. but I feel like that's kind of how it's understood. So to me, I'm on the side of where it should be a let and not a point for the server. I'm with you. You've convinced me. So so and we got a, I see a comment from Trina Himes Negrete. I'm sorry if I said that wrong. Uh, they said it should be dead. Yeah. And I don't know if they mean like dead as in like no point or dead as in like it should be a let. Um, but I, yeah, for me, I'm, I'm on team, the team that sides with it should be a let. If it hits the net, if it's the net, it should be a let. If it hits the net, it should be a let. I like it. If it hits the person. <laughs> All right. Well, and that's a preview of our... That's a preview of our new song. That's our new uh, new rap song. If it hits the net, it should be a let. That's that was very, the name of the song. Very Tom Greenish. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I did feel like Tom Green. Like I was, felt like I was impersonating Tom Green, but I'm totally cool with that. I, I'm a big fan of Tom Green. Yes. Hey, Webby, you know what that sound is? What is that sound? That's the sound of our guest that we have joining us live oh, nice. from Las Vegas, Nevada, at the Las Vegas Open. We have. No way. Cassie Graves. What's going on, Cassie? Nice. Hey. What's hey. up? Hey, it's Cassie's mom. Hey. Well, What's hey. up, Cassie and hey. Cassie's mom? It's uh, you are yeah, sideways now. Oh, uh, no, <laughs> and you're sideways again. I don't know. What's uh? Yeah, what's you're going on. You're guys? gonna have to stick How are you guys? for now. We are. Uh, we're doing you awesome. How are you some doing? Great pickleball and some beautiful uh, sunsets right now. Oh, the weather's awesome. The competition is amazing. We're watching a three point five gold match right now. It's just. It's fabulous. I wish you guys were here. Yeah, we were really able to come, but unfortunately, just the the timing did not work once again. I know last year, Cassie, you were trying to get us to come as well, but we weren't able to make it. So yeah. What are you gonna do? Yeah, there we go. How's it been going so far? Good. Um, today is the last windy day out of the two days so far. So today's the day you wanted to play, but it is a lot bigger than last year. Yeah. Really? A lot more fun. Yeah. Yeah. Competition is stronger. 
Um, we've been seeing the pros walking around, and we have some five O's playing right now, and the three O's are playing. It's just great. The atmosphere, everything is perfect. That's awesome. Nice. Yeah. How did you guys play today? Um, nice job. My mom and Lance got out at 4-0 mix. Um, and then I played my first 4-5 tournament today. Yeah. But by accident, because we every other um, area was full, and that was the only tournament we could get into. So we played 4-5, but we won our first 4-5 game today. So that's cool. All right. How, but we so, did not win. <laughs> well, how, did, you, did you feel a big difference between going from that 4-0 to 4-5? I think the biggest difference was it was slower. It was a lot more dinking where you just... And they obviously targeted the girl more, so it's a lot more just dink, 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 dink. And then you just start to, like, panic a little bit because you're like, this is so much dinking. What do I do? That happened a lot. But it was a lot. It was a really, really good dink game. Way to go. Okay. I think I, I, I think that I might not go back to 4-0 mixed after that. It was a lot. I liked it a lot better. That's cool. Yeah, I feel like every time I play a level up, I enjoy the game much better. Although I typically get beat a little more, it seems like it's more fun, you know? Our very first game, we played at 8 o'clock this morning, came on, we're like, whatever happens, happens. We don't know. We got beat 11-1 both games, and we're just like, ooh, maybe this isn't good for us. But then we came back, won the next game. Um, we were up 13-2. to two. And then they came back, and we won 16 to 14. I don't know how that happened, but it oh, did. Oh, wow. Nice. <laughs> yeah, where, but then where, we lost our next match after that. Yeah. What What was your hangover on a scale of 1 to 10 this morning? Uh, yesterday, an 11. Nice job. Today, I was like, I just need nice. to be a little bit more responsible. <laughs> but tomorrow, you can ask me that, and it might be a 15, because right. I don't have to play tomorrow. <laughs> I'm officially on vacation mode. Yeah. Nice. So you let them know you got them. Well, oh, we, we did, did get, get a medal. medal. I Where saw are you? that. Right there. Yeah. Very nice. Yep. Do you know what we else? Scored a we... Yeah, I, no, that was super cool. How, so, how was how was yesterday's play? How did you feel about that? Um, not the best, but it was more so just couldn't like get into like wanting to play until we kind of got in, like a little argument, and then we we're like, yeah, we're gonna play. An argument with the other team got us kind of pumped up, fired up, and then we started to play a little bit better. Unfortunately, okay. but yeah. <laughs> what was the argument? It was it, it it was round robin, so you you just, you had a set number of games you were gonna play, as opposed to like today was tournament play. It, there just weren't enough teams to like fill the tournament yesterday. But um, what was the argument? Oh, the ref called the wrong score, and I caught the ball mid play, and I said no, no, no. Yeah. And then they said, we still get the point, even though she called it, right? And I was like, no. I was like, oh, no, I did do that. <laughs> they didn't get it, though. Yeah. So they, they My mom the almost point. got called on a technical yesterday for yelling. She became hot-headed. I didn't know you could get a technical in pickleball. You can. <laughs> yeah. Interesting. What, what was what was she How's was uh, Michigan over there? The weather's been great lately, so at the moment we're good. We're kind of in the uh, transition phase between summer and fall, um, but so far it hasn't been too stupid. Like you know, sometimes there's the time where it's like uh, there's a couple days where it's like in the 40s, but then it might be like in the 70s and 80s. So far we haven't hit that crazy fluctuation lately. It's been nice and sunny and good temperature. So at the moment, I love the weather here. Uh, but I do have a question for you, Cassie. Um, how does it feel to be live? This is your first time ever on our podcast live. How does that feel? Nerve wracking, but <laughs> but kind of comfortable because I'm a little drunk, so I'm okay with it. <laughs> perfect. Perfect. All right. <laughs> That's what we would expect being in you, Vegas, right? The the closer it got to like podcast time, the closer it was just like, you know, maybe just a couple more drinks. Just a couple more. Oh, yeah. Yep. All right. No. Well, hey, you know what? You were you were spotted yesterday. We actually have a picture of it, and you were sporting your your famous oh, no. Eddie Webby shirt. Oh, no. Yeah, 
That's such an awful picture. Well, I, I have to tell you that <laughs> okay. that's that's the reason you won a medal yesterday and you didn't win one today is because you weren't wearing the shirt today. And so had you worn it. Yeah. It probably is. No. Mid medal, somebody was like, you maybe if you ha or mid gameplay today, somebody was like, maybe if you had another Eddie and Webby shirt. And I was like, oh, son of a bitch. Yep. <laughs> yeah, it is uh, a proven fact that it is good <laughs> luck to wear an Eddie and Webby shirt while playing. Unless your names are Eddie and Webby, <laughs> then it's yeah. then it's not so much good luck. No. But anybody else that wears it, it's really good luck. <laughs> That's right. I I tried to rep it yesterday, very sweatily, but. I enjoyed when people were like, oh, she's wearing an Eddie and Muffy shirt. And I was like, hell yeah, I am. That's right. I like it. What, what about the koozie? You got your koozie there too? I, I did have my koozie. Yeah. And we were drinking out by the pool. And I was like, this, I have two of them. Like, this is perfect. <laughs> well, we appreciate nice. you. We appreciate you. Basically, support. I'm a walking billboard at this point. Yes. <laughs> Just oh. love you guys so much. Oh. Oh, you're the best. Nice. You're well, the best, Cassie. Oh, for sure. You, you'll always have a special Stop. place you're in our heart. Big, but keep oh. going. Yeah. <laughs> you're one of the OG uh, podcast guests. You'll always have a, a special place in our hearts, no doubt. For sure. My heart goes on for you guys. <laughs> <laughs> so what else, what else do you have planned for Vegas? Anything else cool, fun going on? Um, At this point, I have no plans except for maybe not remembering the rest of Vegas. Ice okay. Park. Oh, we're going to an ice bar. Oh, that's cool. What, like, mm -hmm. like the bar is made of ice? I think so. You're supposed to wear like a fur coat when you go in. I don't know. Interesting. <laughs> I'm gonna just. I know I'm gonna be very bougie, and then tomorrow we have to root our guys on. But I still plan on um, drinking all day tomorrow and rooting them on. Okay. I'm very thankful that I got to play the first two days, right, and now go, I have nothing go. else going on. I just get to be here. That's nice. How, how's Hell your stepdad yeah. doing right now? Um, they went to the gold medal match that came up from the opportunity bracket, and they ended up okay. beating the number one team. So they're in a match. They're in the third match, the one to fifteen. What is the score? Can you flip to it at all? I I don't know if I can flip to it. No. It it's actually six six two right now, and they're in their last game, one to fifteen for the gold. They there had to go. beat them twice, and they beat them once. Okay. Six six two. One of the guys went down with an injury, but he came back blazing, and he is here to play. They're actually our friends that we met last year. They're our first. All right, let's go. They're one of our first friends we ever met at Vegas. So we're playing against people that we oh, also want yeah, to root for. Oh yeah, Brian and Val. Okay. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Sorry, guys. Yeah. Have you uh, have you ran into Matt Loria at all yet since you've been there? Oh, we have like, ran into Matt Loria, who recently got engaged. Yeah, that's what I wanted to give that's them a right. big yeah. shout out. Matt, Matt proposed. Yeah, a little shout out to their engagement. Yeah, that's pretty exciting. Yeah, we took a picture and she's gonna have to, as she should. <laughs> we they I think they lost out kind of early but i told them i was like you should have just told everybody and they would have been like hey listen like let's all lose for the they can get their first win as an engaged couple <laughs> but yep. not nah, it didn't the rumor didn't spread quickly enough i wouldn't have let them win i mean there's there's certain things I, i'll do I in think pickleball but not that <laughs> i think our plan is to hang out with them tomorrow night because um Matt is no longer playing tomorrow. His partner isn't playing with him. So they don't really have plans. So I think our plan is to just drink at some point together. Yeah, But they're, I think they're out with Tyson and Meg tonight. Fun. Bet you they're having a good time. They're at a concert that Matt's been waiting to go to. So I think it sounds like a really good time. Right. Do you know what concert <laughs> it is? Um... Moonchild. No idea what that is. Do you know what concert that is? No clue. No idea. <laughs> Moonchild? Mm hmm. Hmm. I'll have to look that up. So, Cassie, speaking of concerts, <laughs> are you going to try to beat your, uh, your concert record from the year 2018? There's, I'm nowhere near close to it for this year, but I will be back in Detroit for I think my next concert, January 3rd, 
If you're going to be there, Webby, Motion City Soundtrack, I think it's at St. Andrews Hall. If you want to oh, go. Oh, nice. Might have to look into that. Mm -hmm. You want to get just a little bit old school? We'll be there. Nice. That would be fun times. Um, <laughs> all right. Well, anything else going on with you? Nope, just trying trying to be a pro pickleball player slowly but surely. Maybe in a couple, like give me another year and maybe I can say that. Well, I think when you were originally on the like, show. a pro fun pickleball player. Oh, there we go. There we go. But I think when, uh, when you were on our show, I think I gave a prediction of like within the next two or three years, you'll be a 5.0 household name or something like that. So... You've still got another, at least another year to go, and uh, I think you can make it at the rate you're going. You could do it. Just do it. Uh oh, we lost her. Oh no! <laughs> right, right. When you were giving her this like heartfelt, motivational right? speech, and she cut. Yep. What? We'll, we'll, let's just keep the frozen picture up there the whole time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> In fact, just to embarrass her, I'm going to go full screen with this. And frozen. <laughs> yep. We'll just keep that up the whole nice. time. Ah, yeah. well, that yeah. was awesome. The the show. So <laughs> that was now the second time that Cassie's been live from the Las Vegas Open. Last time we recorded live and then played it after on the podcast that we didn't play it live. But she was live from the Las Vegas Open, which was super cool. This time yes. she was live from the Las Vegas Open and live to you guys. And uh, that's what we like to do. She's our Eddie Webby on-site field reporter. She she invented the like the point and, and wink motion last year. Remember that? I do. Yeah, I feel like this needs to be the tradition. Like every year uh, during the Las Vegas Open, if we aren't able to make it, we'll just uh, we'll connect with Cassie, see what's going on there. And uh, it's good times. That's right. Always a good time. Cassie's a good friend of the show. Good friend of ours, too, now, which I'm very excited about. So thank you, Cassie, for that. Um, I see a comment just came through from Kyle Selenko's Facebook account, but apparently it's from Lauren, and she says, where's the Eddie versus Webby match that was supposed to drop last night? And uh, it's on the YouTube channel. It dropped mm -hmm. last night. Just like I said, it would. <laughs> so, yeah, if you check our YouTube channel or our Facebook page, you will see the Eddie versus Webby, a part five. That's right. Go to www.theyoutubes.com slash Eddie and Webby, and you'll find it. The, now, the is YouTube YouTubes. spelled Y Y O O T or Y O U T T? Y O O T O O B S. It's YouTube. Yes. Dot com. That, that's, not, that's like a Michigan Detroit thing, right? Like adding S to everything, like Fords. Yeah. Kroger's. Yep. YouTube's. Yep. Fords. Kroger's. Um, Facebook's. Zima's. <laughs> actually, I think Zima's actually that works. Oh, is it really Zima's? Yeah. No, it's, it's just the Zima. But I do have Zima's. I have Zima's right here. That's Dual true. Zima's. Dose. Um, oh, she. Uh, Kyle said, "Sorry, I was just looking on Facebook. I'm dumb." So I think that was Lauren now trying to blame it on Kyle. <laughs> yeah. Now it's now it's Kyle for sure. Yeah. That's 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 such a that's something that Kyle would definitely say. Should should we bring up uh, Eddie versus Webby Five? You want to talk about that? Yeah, I think we should because uh, that was a pretty epic match. That was epic match, and honestly, before we get into a lot of it, I you know, I want to I want to get real deep, and I want to have a, a very heartfelt moment with you, Webby. All right, don't mind. I'm okay. gonna get a little sappy here. I'm gonna get uh -oh. a little sappy. Um, but I gotta tell you, your game has seriously increased at an exponential rate since the last time I had a chance to play with you between the last time I played with you, which was in July until 
what was that um mid early september when we did eddie versus webby five like your game exploded when we did the practice the night before out in dearborn and i played that first singles match against you i was blown away like <laughs> seriously like you 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 skipped a level like that it was pretty incredible well thanks man i appreciate that and uh i forget who won that match that first match that we played in dearborn i can you refresh my memory because i forget I I honestly don't remember. I, I'm assuming you won. That's why you're asking you that. Yeah, I won. I won that match pretty easily, to be okay. honest. I I totally remember it, and it was uh clear. No, but yeah, I I won the first match. You won the second match. So it was like, man, we did like an exhibition the night before the big Eddie versus Webby five. So I was like, man, this is gonna be uh this is gonna be a pretty close match. I didn't know what to expect because, uh, to be honest, like I have you to thank for me, uh, getting better because. Once I caught wind that you were getting some coaching from Simone, uh, I was like, man, he's uh, like he's he's really committing to this. He he really wants to beat me. So I need to get some practice. So um, the uh, for I would say about four weeks straight, every time that I went to play rec play, I made sure to work in at least a few singles games. And that's not something I typically do. Um, I always hated singles. Um, my cardio is horrible. I've always, I've been pretty vocal about that. How, like, I just, I feel like I would die if I ever tried attempting singles in a tournament. Um, but I played with my buddy, Mark. Uh, we played, man, probably at at least five or six singles matches. And I, uh, I learned that I I can go, uh, a a while without dying, uh, (laughs) playing singles. (laughs) And, uh, it's a good thing. (laughs) And um, I actually didn't do too bad. And I feel like every every day after that, that I played singles, I was I was starting to learn a little bit more uh, about the strategy. I was getting a little bit better. I felt like my cardio got better each time I did it. And like I'm I'm actually starting to like it quite a bit. And in a couple of weeks, for the first time ever, I'm actually doing a tournament singles for the first time ever. My first ever singles tournament is nice. happening. Uh, coming up and uh i my current rating is 3.0 and that's like it it automatically put me in the 3.0 division and i contacted the tournament director and i'm like you know what i've i've been playing 3.5 in in doubles tournaments lately can you like are you okay with bumping me up to 3.5 for this singles tournament so they did that so i'm doing 3.5 and that most people i talk to thinks i'm crazy for doing that because they're like oh man i'm i would have done 3.0 my first time ever for sure but uh, I'm just going to do it. I'm going for 3.5. Yeah, dude, do it. I mean, that's the thing is like, first of all, who cares? Like, to me, rating is such a, it's just a number. It really doesn't mean anything. And who knows? Maybe the 3.0 play is just going to be so wild and erratic that it's going to be tough for you where 3.5 might be a little bit more consistent. And, you know, and maybe maybe that's the right choice, but you gotta you gotta do what's right for you. And plus, like, so what? So you go there and let's say you realize like, oh, three point five was not what I was expecting. What's the worst thing that's gonna happen? Right. Yeah. Exactly. Nothing. And like you and I have discussed many times, like you and I both play way better when we play with people on a higher level. It's crazy. Like when you play people uh, three point oh, it's just it's such an inconsistent. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, like the the level is so inconsistent. So you can play some with some good 3.0 players, but then you can play with some like very beginner type 3.0 players with very inconsistent play, and you just uh, you just don't know what to expect. Um, but I I've been able to tell like the higher level you go up, the more consistent play you do, and that it, the more consistent the opponent is, the like it brings out the best in you. I feel so. Yeah, why not it, do that? It becomes to me, it becomes a lot more than about strategy, court position, setting up the point, and less about like just these crazy erratic shots that are flying at you that you're like, why would you ever hit that shot? It is blatantly going out, but it's like your paddle just naturally touches it because you get you get sucked back to like the first week you ever played pickleball where you had this, <laughs> I'm gonna take everything. And it's just this weird thing that happens when uh Yeah. With, to especially like man every every time i play with like newer beginner players i feel like i gotta i gotta keep pulling myself out of that and being like that's not it's not how you play <laughs> be more patient and consistent because it's it's crazy it's just this erratic right. game that i'm like i don't know how to play this 
Yeah, I agree. Um, so we got a little sidetracked. We were talking about the Eddie versus Webby five match. Um, so we did it in the city of Detroit at Coleman, a young community park. Yes. It was interesting. Center, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. It was interesting. We, we, we pulled up there and there was goose poop <laughs> all over the courts. <laughs> yeah. Everywhere. All over. I don't like, I don't even know why, why the hell was there goose poop there? Like there was no pond anywhere nearby. Like what were the geese doing there? Why were they shitting all over this court? Are there ponds in Detroit? I don't think I've ever seen a pond in Detroit. <laughs> not, not that I know of, and definitely not near this park we were at. But I didn't see any geese. I've never seen any geese in the area of this uh, of this park. But apparently, the geese um, like to use the pickleball courts as their bathroom, and then they fly off to wherever they want to go. Interesting. Well, but anyway, yeah. So we arrive at the courts. Um, I was told by a friend of mine it's probably a good idea to bring a broom. Um, I, I did. So I mainly thought maybe like, maybe there'd be debris, glass, whatever on the court. Syringes. Uh, I was not expect <laughs> Yeah. Some syringes. I was not expecting goose poop. So that was, uh, that was a surprise. Um, so we scraped and broomed <laughs> off all of the goose poop and then, uh, the court was ready to go, except the, uh, the nets were a little messed up as well. The, the nets were a little droopy. Yeah. First of all, the, the courts were Outside of the fact that they really hadn't been maintain- maintained well, they're great courts, and the nets were like very high end nets too. I was actually very pleasantly surprised about that. Yeah, and they're like very newly renovated too. Like they, I think they just had their ribbon cutting like maybe July or August of this year. So it's a very, very newly renovated place. There's two. Uh, it used to be, I think three. Or, it used to be four tennis courts. They repaved everything and there's two brand new tennis courts and then they replaced two of the tennis courts with two new pickleball courts so it's very cool that they did that that they offered that um so i went into the community center i was able to talk to somebody they gave me the proper tool to adjust the nets we got the nets uh, raised up to where they were a good official height and then it was ready for action that's right eddie versus webby a part five that's right and what a battle it was. We had our guest referee, Leslie White, and very grateful for her. That was uh, that was super cool that she came all the way out from Ann Arbor area to, to do that. There was actually quite a, a nice little crowd there of, of every, yeah. here's the, everybody was on Team Webby. Everybody there <laughs> was on Team yes. Webby, right? And so I yep. had no... No team Eddie support whatsoever. I was on my own. (laughs) Everybody was team Webby. They were all booing for me, cheering for you. I felt like, I don't even know what I felt like. You know, I, I, I I felt like the, the wrestler that everybody hates and you were like (laughs) the the heel. You were the heel character. I was the heel. To be honest, like I was definitely getting the cheers. I didn't hear any booing though. Did you really get booed? Um, no, I didn't get booed. There were a couple of times where like I would hit the ball into the net or out of bounds and people were like, yeah. And I'm like, you're cheering. Cause <laughs> as I they should, up. as they should. Yeah. I, as they see, should. That, that all was... right. Listen, <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. That, that's the part where I, I hate when people do that. Like I, it drives me crazy when people cheer because the, the team opposite who they're rooting for screws up like that. Like you're happy that they hit it into the net. Like that's, that's weird. But anyway, yeah, I hear you. I think that cheers should be reserved for when your team or your player like hits a good shot. I I do agree with that part. Yeah, but anyway, good to see the support system you had there. Um, what else do you want to talk about with the matches? Like they were they're fun. Oh, we live streamed the first one, but then ESPN said, "Nope, can't." can't yeah, we were one. we were this close to a deal with ESPN. Um, that we thought that the whole thing was going to be covered by ESPN and be on sports center and all that kind of stuff. So they were like, uh, you, you can live stream the first game, but not the rest of it because we want the exclusive rights to the results and the, uh, the, the matches, the rest of the matches. So you can live stream game one. So that's what we did. We just, after game one, we had to cut it, had to cut it short. So everybody had to wait for the edited version to show up on YouTube and that happened just yesterday. Yesterday is when it aired on the YouTubes. That's right. Um and what 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 can we what can we say about it? What what would you like to talk about the matches? 
Um, so the first game happened, and um, I hit a lot of balls out of bounds, and that killed me. Um, and it was uh, kind of a lopsided victory. I mean, we had some good rallies. It was it was a mm-hmm. decent match, but yeah. the score did not make it seem like a decent match because I think it ended up like eleven to two. Yep, your favor. That's what the scorecard I have here says. That's the gaming <laughs> scorecards, by the way. Oh, nice. Yeah. Let's see here. Well, she wrote 10 to 2, but I think she meant 11 to 2. But, yeah. Oh, wait. So the, game, the first game never even ended. Wait a second. <laughs> it was just 10 to 2? Yep. Oh, well, we got to redo it. Got to redo the whole thing. Yep. Yep. Or maybe she put 10 to 2 because one of those points you scored was because of a very, very bad call. <laughs> yeah. That's, yeah. It, I will admit, it was not. It was not a good call. It, now that I go back and watch it. But the funny part is, if you would have asked me right then, I would have bet a million dollars that that ball was out. Yeah, you know it, I mean? uh, yeah it, I mean, I know, I know it can happen. Um, but uh, I had to, uh, because you beat me so badly, I had to make sure I put in the video how bad that call was. <laughs> because uh, like, there, was like, there was like that much space in between the ball and the white mm-hmm. line, and then the out of bounds area. So I had to, I had to put that on blast. I just had to. I'm sure you understand. <laughs> I totally understand. Um, but I mean, yeah, I mean, it was it was still a bad defeat at that point in the game. It was five to two. So I mean, who knows? Maybe I would have gotten the momentum. But I typically, as far as history goes, with my like tournament outings and then our Eddie versus Webby matches, my first game is always the worst. I always do the worst. It takes me a game to really like kick it into high gear and get into into gear. So I, I probably wouldn't have come back from that still. Um, but I mean, yeah, I just I had to put that on blast for sure. The the bad call. Yeah, I get it. I totally get it. But so that was game one, eleven two, and then game two. Yeah, then game two happened. And I actually took uh, took an early lead in that one. I was uh, I was very determined. I was a lot more motivated, and I felt like I was a lot more on my game. And uh, we battled back and forth. We had a few really really good rallies that game too. Uh, a few uh, very close calls, as far as like uh, just like it could have gone either way. One of us just happened to hit a, a better shot than the other or one of us hit it out of bounds or into the net or whatever, but we had yeah. some great rallies and it was like, when I watched back the footage, like I I'm impressed with both of us. I thought we yep. both did great, especially considering neither of us really played singles much till just recently. So yep. considering how new we are to the singles game, I thought we did pretty, pretty, pretty good. I will tell you that I felt like it was much harder playing on that side of the court than the, where I played in the first match. Yeah, I agree. Like the the whole night, that side of the uh, of the court mm-hmm. for some reason just seemed easier. I don't really yeah. know why. I don't know. I I, th- I think it might have been the wind. I think there there might have been a wind. You know, I don't know, six eight feet up in the air. I'm not really sure why, but anyway, it totally different. I felt I felt like game two. It, it took me a while to just get used to that side of the court. Like that, I you know, you took a, an immediate lead, and I'm like, what the hell's going on? Because it just it. Everything fell off. It didn't feel right. Yeah. And uh, we're about to go into the results of the rest of the tournament. So if you don't want a spoiler, turn off the podcast right now. Go check out our YouTube channel. You can see the highlights and see the results of the match. But from here on out, we are going to spoil the Eddie versus Webby 5 match. So here's your alert. Here's your warning. And here we go. We're going to continue with the discussion. That's right. But uh, yeah, game two, it was back and forth. I, I had the lead. You tied it up. You took the lead. I think I tied it up again. It, it went back and forth for a, quite a bit. Um, the final score was 11 to 8. Very close. That's not bad at all. And the winner of that match was... I, don't, I can never remember this this guy right here. Unfortunately, <laughs> I never know which way to point. It's like I always can never I can never get I never know which way to point on the on this thing. But it's yeah, hey, he won. This guy, yep, Eddie. I won. 
I'm now the the five time Eddie versus Webby champion. You can see yep. I have the belt right here, along with the autographed Kyle Yates paddle right here. It came back to Florida with me. I was very excited. My office would feel very weird without <laughs> it. And it was great. But yes, it was a freaking battle. I mean, we played yes. our asses off, that's for sure. Yes, we did. And uh, our buddy Scott Golden, um, shortly before this match, he sent us his signature paddle, which is now available at Dick Sporting Goods. You can get it at the stores mm -hmm. or on their website. The Golden X. I don't have it with me right in here, but I do have the, uh, the packaging right there. I have it hanging up on my wall. You, you want to hear something funny about that? So I went to the Dick Sporting Goods in Naples, the one where I posted that picture of, and all of the packaging was turned around to where Scott Golden's picture was was facing out instead of facing back. So it was like the, I think it was like the back side of the package was out. So <laughs> that was kind of funny. I feel like they wanted to to highlight Scott Golden's picture. <laughs> on nice. That. Yeah. It was very cool. nice. But yeah, that was that was very nice of him to uh, to send that. So, uh, Scott Golden and Monarch, the fine folks from that organization, sent us yep. each a paddle. And uh, it was pretty good. I, I liked it. It's the first time I've ever used an elongated paddle. Um, it's a bit on the heavy side. So if you like a heavier paddle, then uh, you would absolutely like it. It does feel like you're wielding an axe for sure. But I, I think I, I'm going to continue playing with it for singles because I really did like it. I liked getting that extra reach. I liked the fact that I felt like I could hit the ball harder. Uh, the The weight. You know, it's it's definitely more balanced towards the head of the paddle, which I feel like will allow you to rip it. Uh, so I like it. I think I'm going to keep playing with it for singles. I, I I don't know that I could give it up for my doubles game. I love my my paddle tech Tempest Pro. I'm very partial to that. But for singles, I think I'll keep playing with it. Yeah, I I definitely am not going to give up my my Tempest Pro for for doubles. I've been uh, playing very well with that lately. I love my Tempest Pro. Uh, but I agree with you. For singles, I I might stick with the Golden X. I got a I got to figure that out soon. I got my tournament in like two, maybe three weeks. Uh, I'm going to be doing some pretty intense singles training the next couple of weeks. And uh, I will figure out which paddle I'm going to stick with for singles. And we'll see how it goes. Nice. Well, we did announce earlier what we're going to be doing for Eddie versus Webby 6. And that is going to be a mixed doubles match where I'm going to be playing with Christy, and you're going to be playing with Leslie White. Is that right? Yep. They are from Wolverine Pickleball in the Ann Arbor, Saline area of Michigan. And they, man, they are doing an awesome job over there in the Ann Arbor area. Um, they've been running Wolverine Pickleball for, <clears throat> I think, a little over a year now. And it's uh, it's been awesome. The, the first gold medal I ever won was during one of their tournaments. They had a, a 3.0 round robin tournament that I was part of. And uh, that was the first gold medal I ever won. Uh, my buddy Ray and I, the first tournament he and I ever did together was the Wolverine uh, doubles tournament. And uh, that was earlier this year. Um, it was a very tough group. We did not win a medal that group or that, that round. But, I mean, we beat some very good teams. Uh, we just didn't uh, beat enough teams to get a medal. But they, they put on a great tournament. It's... Uh, it's really awesome what they're doing in Ann Arbor. I love it. Yeah, super cool. Had a blast playing with them. And I'm looking forward to Eddie versus Webby Six. Yeah, and actually, uh, after since you and I played our singles match, I've played with, uh, with Leslie and Christy. Uh, they have a group that meets up in the Ann Arbor area. I've played with them, and I have learned so much by playing with them. Um, they... they give me tips as we go and i kid you not my game has improved greatly in the last month or two uh just by playing with them and the tips they've given me and i uh was able to see that in the last tournament i did it was the first tournament that i like really could see major improvement in my playing and i definitely have them to thank for that because they they have given me some great tips it's crazy how you know playing with better people and even just getting a few tips and kind of showing a few different things can just completely change your game. 
Oh, for sure. No doubt about it. So if you if you ever get a chance to play with some higher level players, even if you think they're you're like way out of your league, if higher level players are willing to play with you, you've got to give it a try. It's yeah. it's a game changer for sure. And just call it out and just say, listen, I'm not at your level. Um, and, and most of the time they're going to be they're going to be cool about it. In fact, I you know, I'm like this close to wanting to make a video talking about how to get better players to play with you because honestly if you're if you keep going to maybe maybe you play in your community and you got the same people that bang the ball around and they're not they're not improving their game they're not you know improving any strategy anything like that if you keep doing that you're never going to get better you have to play with better people in order to be able to get better and so i oh, do for think sure. that it's important that we figure out ways to you know to consistently play with those better people if you're the better player make sure that you're playing with people, you know, and, and, and knowing what you're getting into, I'm not going to go play with, you know, maybe some beginners and expect to get a whole lot out of it, except for have some fun and maybe turn some people on yeah. the sport. I'm not going to, I'm not going to walk away with it, you know, improving my skill set necessarily. So you just have to know what you expect going into it. Um, but I think it's, it's important that we play with those people who are not as skilled as us. Mm -hmm. Oh, for sure. Absolutely. No doubt about it. Yes. Um, well, good stuff. Well, speaking with about playing with better players, um, I, I know I mentioned earlier, I, I think her name's been brought up at least 20 or 30 times in this entire <laughs> podcast and uh, dinking around here, but um, I've, I've had a lot of opportunities lately to be able to interact with and even hit with Simone and super awesome like getting lessons from her or any drills or anything like that it's just unbelievable what she can do to help your game uh and and you watch her play and you're just blown away by her athleticism the way she hits the ball how calm and cool she is out there the way that she aligns her her body to hit the shots she always anticipates where that shot's gonna be like it's incredible to to see somebody at that level play. Oh yeah, that that is awesome. I'm very jealous that you have been getting the opportunity to to do that. And uh, if you watch our training video, like when you and I were each training to get ready for Eddie versus Webby Five, um, I could just tell like the the level of training that she was giving you was pretty incredible. Like I love the fact that anytime that you made an error, she would say, "Okay." Uh, why did that happen? And mm -hmm. like ask you like why you think you made the error that you did. And then you would tell her and then she would either say yes or whatever, or uh, tell you like what the cause was. I mean, that's, that's awesome to get that like real world, like uh, at the moment feedback. I mean, I, I when I did some training with uh, DJ Howard, it was uh very eye opening and awesome. And like, you just, you can't beat that kind of training to get training from a pro level player. Like th there's nothing like it. And if anybody ever gets the chance, you got to do it. I agree. Definitely. Uh, definitely, you know, look into who you have around you and, and check it out. Um, one, one more thing I wanted to add in regard to that though, is I, we talked about Eddie versus Webby five. Webby had this whole cheering section for him, all these people on team, team Webby, which was super awesome. Even though I didn't have any support at all. And I was on my own and I was like, <laughs> I was like the the guy that nobody wanted to win, and I had to battle it. Um, I feel pretty good because of a picture I'm about to show you, uh, and this is a picture from just earlier today of Chad and Simone as they were heading to the airport to fly to Vegas. And what is Simone wearing there? Uh, a team stupid face shirt. Is that what it says? <laughs> That would be a Team Eddie shirt. Simone is officially on Team Eddie. Uh, Chad wanted to remain neutral. He just wanted to support both of us. Uh, but Simone is all in on Team Eddie. And that right there makes me incredibly happy. So thank you so much for... Thank you to Chad and Simone for helping to represent Eddie and Webby. Thank you, Simone, for your support of hashtag Team Eddie. Very cool. That is pretty awesome. Not going to lie. That's awesome. Yeah. Definitely good stuff. 
Um, yeah. So I still have like over half a drink left, so we could probably talk about a couple more things here. Webby, it, I, it is way past my yeah. Naples bedtime, but how are you? I got no, I got nothing left in my can, but we can still oh, no. talk about some stuff. All right. Well, um, I was originally going to I was originally going to talk about my uh, my tournament experience in Traverse City recently, the Great Lakes Open. Um, but I actually talked about that pretty in depth. Well, I talked about a key moment in depth during the uh, episode 51 with Barrett and Jana. Um, I guess I could talk a little more about it. Um, mm-hmm. Oh, hey, Mickey. I see that uh, Mickey left us a comment saying hi. So hello there. Well, hello. Thanks for watching. <laughs> but yeah, I played at the uh, Great Lakes Tournament, the Great Lakes Open Tournament in Traverse City this past weekend. That was a, a fun experience. Um, and like I said earlier, like I feel like that was the best I've ever played in a tournament. I did not come home with a medal, unfortunately. Um, but even still, I'm still very happy with how I did. And I was telling Eddie earlier, this is the first time I've ever watched back the uh, the footage of me playing, and I didn't cringe the entire time <laughs> because I actually I actually felt like I did decent. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it definitely you can tell that you know your game was pretty solid. Um, yeah, I mean, I I can see why you would definitely think that. I think it's normal to cringe at your own game no matter what, but obviously the, the least you cringe, the better, right? Right. And I, I definitely, like, don't get me wrong, I definitely had some cringeworthy moments. I didn't play perfect, but as far as my overall game throughout the tournament, I, uh, it was the first time I ever, like, felt okay with myself and felt like I'm making progress and that, uh, that I am improving. Absolutely. It's a good feeling. Absolutely. Yeah, I feel, like there's this, I feel like there's this point in pickleball where it's like things click all of a sudden for you. And it's not that it's it's not that it clicks in your ability to execute. It's where it clicks in your ability to know, all right, what shot should I be doing? Where am I supposed to be hitting the ball? What am I supposed to be doing with my partner? Right. It's like all of a sudden it's like, oh, I get it now. And then it's just making sure that you can execute to do all those things that you know that you're supposed to be able to do. Um, so that's. I don't know. To me, I I feel that way, and I feel like I kind of reached that a few months back. Obviously, I don't execute on it all the time, but what what do you think about that statement? Yeah, I I agree a hundred percent. And I feel like about a month ago, like shortly after our singles match, that's when I had like one of those like click moments. I was like, oh, th- this is when I should do a drop shot. <laughs> this is when I should do a drive mm-hmm. and stuff like that. It was like before I just kind of like I did it whenever I was like, okay, I'm going to mix it up. I'm going to do a drive this time just because I'm going to mm-hmm. do a drop shot this time just because, but now it's like, I'm learning, okay, this is a good time to do a drop shot. This is a good time to do a drive. I'm finally learning like, okay, this is when I should do these types of shots and it is paying off big time. Yeah, it's good. There, there's nothing worse too than, you know, one thing that Simone always says is protect your partner. And one of the things that frustrates me the most whenever I play play down a little bit is that I'll play with partners who basically get me killed over and over and over again. And it's because of just the incorrect shot selection. Like you were saying, it's just, you know, okay, I'm going to drive this time. I'm going to drop this time. It's like, well, where where are you in the court? Where's your partner? If your partner's up at the line, you definitely don't want to rip it to the person right across from them because then you're just, you're you're letting your partner get murdered at that point, right? Right. And so yep. it's just, yeah, knowing what shots to do. And like I said, it's not, it's not so much about being able to execute on them. Those are always, those are always tougher to be able to do. Um, but at least knowing what to do in those circumstances, I feel like just knowing what to do alone is going to, you know, just helps your game so much. Oh yeah. 100% could not agree more. Yes. Do you have any tournaments coming up? Yeah, I've got one in a couple weeks. It is called the Eventus Pickleball Tournament in Grand Blank. Mm. And that is going to be my first ever singles tournament experience. Okay. Are you playing doubles as well or just singles? Only singles. I was supposed to do doubles. I was looking very forward to it because I uh, I have a buddy that I've been playing with. Um, he is close to my age. 
um, which is very rare for me. I've uh, mm-hmm. always played with people a lot older than me. <laughs> mm-hmm. And uh, we've played some rec games together and we do very well together. And I think we could be a very good team. And we were signed up together. And then uh, something came up uh, in my personal life that I just couldn't miss. Uh, something involving my daughters. And I was like, ah, oh, man, I just this, this is something I can't miss. I'm going to have to drop out of doubles. So that was very unfortunate. But I'm sure that we'll, uh, we'll play doubles together sometime soon. And I do think that we'll make a very good team. Um, we're very similar skill level, uh, similar age. Uh, we're, we're both able to get around the court pretty good. So I think, uh, I definitely think we could easily win some 3.5 and above medals in the future together. Very nice. Do uh, it but because of that, because of that, I am doing singles because that is the day before. Uh, so I was able to get the day off work. It's on a Friday and, uh, I'm doing singles for the first time ever going for the 3.5 division. Uh, some people think I'm crazy for doing it, but I'm just doing it, and I'm pretty excited about it. Haters gonna hate. Yep, potatoes gonna potate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they are. <laughs> uh, what about you? What's going? Anything coming? Any any tournaments coming up for you soon? Yeah. So, Mark Mangoon and I are gonna be playing together in uh chad and simone's tournament in november i can't remember the name of that one all the names are blending together for me um we're also going to be doing a tournament at pickleplex towards the end of october uh i just signed up today for the fall league at chad and simone's place scott golden's actually running that league peak performance pickleball academy benita springs ymca uh, Mark nice. Mangoon, he he also joined that as well, and it's a 4.0 and above league, so it's going to be a a really really good challenge. But I'm feeling good. I'm definitely up for it because it's going to start immediately after a, a three day camp that I'm doing at Peak Performance Pickleball Academy um, for 4.0 and above play. So I feel like I'm going to be coming fresh off that camp, ready to roll. Probably going to have a lot of people that are in that league in that same camp. So. I think it's going to be a great time to start that up. And I, I honestly feel like, like I told you, you know, the game just kind of started to click for me within the last few months, but I haven't, I still don't know how to execute and everything. It's like, I know what shot I want to do, but I can't always do it because of just, you know, where my paddle is and not able to get to it and just, you know, fast hands and stuff like that. I'm still trying to learn that. I feel like this camp and playing in this league is going to be what now helps me to execute. So it's like, I know how to, I know what to do. I know where to put the ball. I know what I should be doing. Now it's just consistently being able to execute. And that's, that's kind of my goal for this camp and the league, which I'm really excited about. So nice. My goal is to become a benchmark 4.0 player by the end of the year. I don't know that I have enough tournaments between now and the end of the year to be able to prove that I'm benchmark when it comes to results. Um, but what what I what I will consider successful is to play in a couple four oh tournaments uh and and feel good about my game. I don't like this is something Webby that you and I kind of have a little bit of a difference of opinion on. I really don't care about medals, right? Like um like Barrett was saying earlier, you can get a bronze medal and get third place, right? You can get uh and yeah. and, and so it's like the medal really means you got dead last. You know, and so it's like that 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 to me doesn't that doesn't matter what matters to me is am i playing well am i playing to the best of my abilities and so my hope is the two 4.0 tournaments that i'm signed up for right now as well as i hope to be able to sign up for one more before the end of the year that i i feel very good about my game i'm very consistent um i feel good about it like that to me is what my goal is by the end of the year. And I truly believe that by focusing on that, because you can control that, right? You really can't control if you get medals or not. It's literally outside of your control. But if you focus on that, you focus on your game, you focus on the training, you focus on your execution, you focus on all those things, then ultimately those medals will potentially come when the time is right. But to me, it's like focusing on trying to get that medal is it's not a good strategy because you literally have no control over it. Yeah, I can understand that point. 
Um, to me, I, I've said it before, I kind of treat it almost like a video game. Like I feel like I need to earn my way to the next level. I've won a couple gold medals at the 3.0 level. I'm still technically a 3.0 player, but because I've at least reached gold a couple times, and one of them was like a very hard-fought, very well-earned gold medal, that made me want to start doing 3.5. So I've been doing 3.5. I've gotten a silver and a bronze in 3.5. I would really like to get a gold, <clears throat> and then uh, I'm ready to start doing 4.0, to be honest. That's, some people might think I'm crazy, but... Like if I, as soon as I get a gold medal in 3.5, I'm, I'm ready to start doing 4.0 regardless of what my skill level is. But why not just do it now? I mean, that's the thing is like, people are going to think you're crazy no matter what, whether you have the medals or not. If, if like, you know, like right now, you know, that, that, that doesn't matter to me. I would think just start it now the, because here's the thing, right? Is that let's say you go and let's say you do a 4.0 tournament. What's the worst thing that's going to happen? You're either going to realize that you're out of your element and go back to the drawing board, play three five for a little bit, and get your get your skill level back up. But at least you're going to know right away what it is you need to work on. I did that for a tournament with Anthony last year in June, and I knew I was out of my element back then. But I'm like, let's do this, man. Let's try it. And honestly, that was the best I have ever played at a tournament outside of maybe how Mark and I played at the Pickleplex tournament back in July. But long story short. I feel like by playing up, you're going to learn very quickly what you need to work on. And so whether you play 3-5 or 4-0, to me, it's really just a matter of what is it that you're trying to get out of the tournament. If you're trying to win gold medals, you're a 3-0. Why not just play 3-0, right? You can technically do it. You can still, and you, you know that if you do that, you're going to win a gold medal, right? Yeah, yeah, you're very right. So, and to be honest, if, if, if anybody that I know that's a 4.0 player wants to play with me, knowing that I'm still technically a 3.0, I will gladly do it. Like if you would have asked me three months ago, I wouldn't have even considered it. But I'm at the point now where I realize your point. Like I, I definitely play way better against people that are a higher skill level, and I've played with and against people that are doing 4.0 and 4.5 tournaments, and I feel like I can keep up with them just fine. So yeah, I, I. If anybody listening is a 4-0 player and wants to do a tournament with me, let me know and I'll do so. Um, but yeah. I still I still would like to get a, a gold medal at the 3.5 division. I, I kind of want to earn my way up, but I mean, I, I will definitely not be against playing in 4-0 if somebody that's at that level already wants to play with me. Let me ask you a question. Let's say you win gold at 4-0. Are you going to be like, ah, I still want to earn that 3-5 gold? Or are you just going to be happy that you won gold at 4-0? No, if I get if I get gold at four oh, I'm I'm gonna stay four oh yeah. and and work my way up from there. Yeah. So That's the way I am. I, I can't stand people that like stay in their official rating in tournaments, even though they know like there's some people that you know deep down they know that they're better than three but they're still doing three oh tournaments. Like yeah. I can't stand that kind of thing. I'm hundred percent with you. Play up. I mean every every pro would give you that advice. And there's a comment you made that I think is really important here. And that is when your game becomes mature enough to where you can hold your own against and with 4.0 or 4.5 and maybe even 5.0 players. And I'm not talking about winning. I'm just talking about holding your own, having some competitive points. To me, that's the point when you're ready to play 4.0. Because even if when you're at that point and you play against or with 3-0 or 3-5 players, you might not play all that well because it's kind of confusing and garbled and all over the place and you get sucked in that style of play, you know that when you play with the 4-0 players, that's the level you're going to play up to. And so, right. again, if you can hold your own against a 4-5 or 5-0 player out there, and I'm not talking about winning, just holding your own, I think you're ready to move up and try 4.0. Yeah, I agree. I I used to like hardcore disagree with you. Like, yeah, you got to no, you got to stay your level. You got to earn your way up, earn your way up, then play the next level. I used to be hardcore uh, that side of the fence, but now I am absolutely more so on your side of the fence. Uh, I do think I maybe like winning medals a little more than you do. Like, I I still like I like. Uh, like that's still a, a big goal of mine every time. Like yours might not be as much as mine, but 
whatever. I feel like I'm rambling right now. It's all good. <laughs> no, I think I think it's important just to know what you want to get out of the game. Like Gianna would have talked about earlier. She wants to go to these tournaments and she wants to win. That's her goal. That's what she's going for. To me, I it's just not... I would much rather go to a tournament and lose, but play incredibly well. Like play the best games that I ever have and just end up having an opponent that maybe played down or you know, maybe had some bad line calls or something like that. Like I would feel so good walking away from that than I would if I showed up at a 3-0 tournament and won gold and just, you know, played like, eh, whatever. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like I, I would much rather have that experience where I don't even win anything and play awesome and feel great about it. Yeah, for sure. Well, just like this, the, this past tournament I did at the Great Lakes Open in Traverse City, um, didn't win a medal. But I am the most proud of how I did than any other tournament I've done just because I felt like I played great. It was a, a tough division. Um, it just really sucks that it ended uh, on a, a very sour note. Like it was a, a very back and forth game. Final score was 18 to 16, and the other team won on what I am very convinced was a, a bad call on their part. They called the ball out. And I am uh, pretty positive it was on the line. And uh, like it, it, that hurts. It still hurts me. It still hurts me that it ended that way. Like, I can't believe, yeah. like, I don't think they did it on purpose. I think in their mind, it really was out. But like, I, I flat out told them, like, that was on the line, man. Like, I didn't ask them. I told them, like, that ball was on the line. And I really, like, it's crazy to me. That you're gonna that you're gonna win this game in this way after that epic game we just had. Yeah, I would have been pretty upset. And, and if I was them, I would have replayed the point. I would have asked the ref, "Can we replay it?" Yeah, and that that's what I would have done. Like if I if I was that team, and uh, and the other the other team was so uh, adamant about the the ball being out. I mean, I know they they probably don't know me. They don't know my personality. I mean, you know me. You know I'm not going to be that um passionate confrontational and confrontational. That's just that's not who I am. Like I've never I've never been confrontational in a pickleball game before. If somebody even if I know that somebody made a bad call, I usually just brush it off, but that was one I could not brush that one off because it was a to me it was a blatantly bad call. I mean, it was, it was close. I mean, it wasn't like, like two inches in bounds, but it was definitely on the line yeah. and, uh, it just left a very, very bad taste in my mouth. How many of your balls did the ref overturn your out calls on? I don't know. Zero. I watched that video. I saw at least one. Did what? I saw at least one in that match that you called it out and the ref overturned it. You did? Mm-hmm. I called out like three and the ref said he never, he didn't see it each time. I don't know. Go back and check it. All I'm saying is that mistakes happen, right? And yeah, I understand it sucks when it... Oh, you're, you're just... I see what you're saying. You're trying to, trying to make up for your bad call, right? No, I don't care about that. <laughs> I still stand by that call. I'm saying that... What I'm saying is that, yeah, it, I understand it, your circumstance is different because that call, there's nothing you could do. You can't make up for it. It's not like you could keep playing the game and just brush it off. It was over. It was just done. It was just a bad call. Yeah. Done. All yeah, I'm trying to that's... add to it. Yeah. Is that the human element is there. We've all, yeah. we've all been there before. So. Oh yeah. And I'm not trying to say I'm perfect by any means. I mean, I obviously I'm, I'm positive. I've made bad calls in the past. It just sucks that. In that situation, yeah. the game that was a game ender, and it was uh, such a back and forth, awesome match, and for it to end that way, that's right. Just a little frustrating. That's all. That's all I gotta say. I get it. Got a good question here from Blair Cremines, our friend. He said, "What do you define holding your own as in a game? Um, do you want to go first on that, Webby?" Uh, sure. That's a that's a really good question. And I would just say, like, um, let's say you play a team, play against the team five times, and maybe you win only one of those games. Or if each game was very close, like, let's say you lost all of them, but it was only by, like, 
two or three points that you lost, to me, that's considered holding your own in a game. What about yeah. you? I, I don't, to me, it's not so much about the score. It's so much about, um, all right, if you're playing against a higher level 4.0, 5.0 player and they speed the ball up at you, are you able to at least block it and keep it in play? Are you being uh, maybe offensive and doing a cross court dink to try and be strategic? You know, are you placing the ball? Are you able to stay in dink rallies? Um, you know, with them and and not pop the ball up and and give them, you know, the attackable shot. Um, are are you able to basically stay in the point to eighty percent to where they're winning just because they have that little bit more skill that you have and they're they're attacking the balls that maybe at three point five and four point are not attackable. Where at four point five and five point they are able to attack it. Right, you're able to really just stay in those points for a long period of time and you know match their skill at 80 percent because to me that's all that that's that's the only difference to me the biggest difference between 4.0 and 5.0 is 20 percent it's a big 20 percent it's a very uh it's a very crucial 20 percent that really separates it but it is only 20 percent of the game if you're consistent with your drops if you can hit the occasional drive if you know how to dink if you understand how to be able to hit from your forehand and your backhand and you're consistent with it, then you can play against anybody and at least stay in the point for a period of time. You and I were able to have some pretty nice long points against Kyle Yates. I would say that we were able to hold our own for part of it. I mean, he did beat us pretty bad, but still, you know what I mean? So that, that to me is what I mean by holding our own. Maybe another way to put it is, are the 4.5 and 5.0 level opponents actually feeling like it's a fun game or do they feel like you're just this wild erratic person that's hitting the ball without any sort of like sense or purpose in your pickleball game that's what i would define as holding your own all right yeah i'm down with that um i know you said the score doesn't really matter but like if you let's say you play a team five times and the most you ever score against them is like two or three I feel like even if like each rally was good and you just you can't execute enough to get more than two or three points, I don't know. To me, I feel like score does matter in some regards, but don't I still you think that do. don't you think that like a three point or a three point five hack who just stands there and bangs the crap out of the ball over and over again is gonna be able to get two to three points on a on a four point five team? Possibly, but I feel like that's not holding your own though. Like if you only get two or three points. That's exactly what I'm saying. So you have to take the score out of it and you have to make it to where it's it has nothing to do with the score because you can't control the score, right? All you can control is how you play. So to me, holding your own is, are you able to stay in the play longer? Is it competitive play? Is it is it fun? Does it does it look like pickleball or does it look like people just banging the crap out of the ball on, on a court? That's all. Right, right, all right. Yeah. So... That's just the sports psychology of me. I'm married to a sports psychologist or somebody who has their master's degree in it. So that to me is what's important because it's what you can control. You can control, you can control how, how consistent you are with your third shot drops, right? You can control your drives. You can control your ability to dink. You can control your training. That's going to get you prepared for those matches. You can't control the score. You can't control who your opponents are. You can't control the wind, the rain. You can't control lights. Like you just, so there's no point in really worrying about that. You just focus on what you can control and also making it fun. And then there you go. Some great words, some very wise and great words. Well, thank you. From the five time Eddie versus Webby champion. That's <laughs> right. The five time. Um, what else, anything else you want to talk about here tonight? I feel like I feel like we're on a roll. I feel like we got good stuff going, but it is pretty. Late. I know, man. We've got such a such a flow going, but yeah, it is late. Holy geez, it's almost eleven o'clock. It's almost past my bedtime. That means it's like two hours past your bedtime. Yeah, for sure. I do think it's funny that sometimes I'll wake up in the morning and I'll have like two or three texts from Webby from like ten forty, ten forty five, and I'll I'll have already been asleep by then. Yeah, you uh, often. you old Florida people. That's right. <laughs> wow, 
What another great episode of the Eddie Webby podcast. What another great episode of thinking around good topics. I feel like we had great guests. We had Cassie Graves live from the Las Vegas Open, which was pretty cool. Yeah, very cool. And her mom. That's Both right. of them were part of Eddie versus Webby 4, which was an impromptu match that happened just a couple months ago. That was awesome. Yeah, a lot of fun. Both Cassie and her mom are good players, a lot of fun to play with. You guys should check out that video if you're interested. It was, uh, it was a fun match. Good times. Wait a second. There is one more thing we got to do before we sign off today. What's that? There is a very special video from one of our biggest fans uh, that we should definitely play right now. All right, here we go. Next, we're going to be playing pickleball. Yep. My future pickleball partner right there. Mm -hmm. Did you have a bite in a minute ago? Yeah. Okay. And all right. I also have a shout out to all the pickleball players that play with my mom. Oh, I love and it. The Eddie and Webby show. Oh, the Eddie and Webby show. Reel that baby in. There you go, Mace. All right. There you go. I don't know, girl. Let's see. Oh, that looks like a sunfish. <laughs> I love it. Such a good video. That is from one of our biggest fans, Macy, who is the daughter of our good friend, Stephanie. And uh, that was awesome. I love that video clip. Yeah, we actually got to play with Stephanie and Macy a couple weeks ago when I was in Michigan at the Dearborn courts. That was, that was a lot of fun. Yep, at the uh, the Ford Community Center in Dearborn. They have four brand new, very nice courts. If you've never checked them out and you're in the area, you must do so. They are awesome. And uh, I'll actually be playing there tomorrow after work. going to be practicing my singles game, getting ready for the upcoming tournament. Um, but yeah, that was a great time when uh, Stephanie and her daughter Macy were there and we had uh, a few other friends. Uh, Stephanie, I mean, <laughs> I already said Stephanie. Uh, <laughs> Leslie and Christy were oh, there Stephanie as well. Stephanie was there though, right? Um, Stephanie was there. Yeah. Yep. Stephanie yeah. was there and her Stephanie daughter, Macy. Yeah. Macy and her, uh, her mother, Stephanie were there. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Ah, well, good. We'll keep practicing because we got Eddie versus Webby six coming up and we got, uh, Curtis Smith paddle tech coming Tuesday, October 1st. You don't want to miss that big unveiling of all the crazy new stuff coming up with paddle tech. Friday night, that's right. Pickleball show, uh, going to be a lot of fun. Have a couple of the juniors playing with them. That will be fun. Actually, I uh, I'm going to be dropping a video soon. I got a chance to play a couple matches with and against Johnny Pickleball, and that there we go. There's another question from from Blair. Being able to hold your own, I think it's whenever you're in matches um, like the video that we're going to be showing of me playing with Johnny and um, a couple other top players too, where it just it doesn't feel like you're completely out of place. You actually feel like you're able to hold your own, stay in the point. Nice. Yeah. Man, I'm so jealous. You get that you're playing with pro level players consistently down there. Man, I got my work cut out for me for Eddie versus Webby six, but I'm telling you a loss is coming your way. We'll see. So you just can't focus on whether you win or lose, right? See? Ha! How about that? How about this for proof? I'm the five-time, and never once have I cared about the outcome. I don't believe that. I feel like that's a, a mind game of yours. You're trying to portray that, and inside, it's like eats you alive. I mean, you uh, you were so scared of losing, you got training from Simone before our uh, Eddie versus Webby five match <laughs> but it has nothing to do with me wanting to lose it's because i wanted to play well but here's the thing right let's say i would have lost to you let's say i would have played well like like i did and lost to you do you think i would have been upset or do you think i would have been so happy for how amazing you played and beat me and and i played well like what what why would i be upset about that except for the fact that the belt wouldn't be with me i'd be upset about that but <laughs> But yeah, I think uh, I think you're just, you're weird in that regards to where you'd actually, you'd actually be happy for me for winning. I would, or I'm, I, is that why I, I won? You win. Or is just that kidding. why I won? No, I don't think so. 
All right, guys. Uh, what you can else keep you telling have? yourself that, but no, it's not true. I'll prove it. I'll prove you wrong one of these days. I just haven't done so yet. <laughs> well, no, I, that's what I'm saying. Like, I think, I think that one day, one day, it is likely that you'll win, and I'll be very happy for you. As long as I play well, you're if a, I play crap, you win. Man. I'm not gonna be happy about it. I'm like that sucks. There's <laughs> nothing worse than playing like crap, and that's what like I don't care if I win or lose. I just don't want to play it crap. I want to play well. I want to enjoy it. I right. want it to be a good competition you know that's right so anyway anything else you want to talk about no i think that is it we had a very long night it was an awesome night and uh another excellent night of eddie and webby podcasting if you ask me i totally agree i know it's been a little while since we had our last episode it's been what like five weeks four weeks something like that yeah something like that it's been forever but we are going to have another episode Tuesday. And then Webby and I are going to coordinate our crazy busy schedules, try and get some more content out here coming up very soon. But on that note, I'm Eddie. And until next time, this is Webby, not Eddie, signing off. I'll see you.